in. And we're going to once again see the response here to the Talia. The Akali is what players like Closer like to play into this, even though the dashes and stuff like this can be very annoying. Same thing with LeBlanc. See whether they can as we hop into the Rift, the game number one. Uh, as far as the rest of the lanes go, um, Chovy should just, in general, win until level six at least uh, on this Talia. The Akali on a pretty, uh, yeah, a decent losing streak here in the LCK. Kind of the opposite Annie, uh, as far as all things are considered, as this wave is going to move in. Oh man, look at this. Look at this piercing arrow angle, if he wants it. It would have been really fun, but he actually decides not to use it. As okay, we've got Kale, Kyle on a leash. As what the heck was that? Pop go the blight stacks, I guess. Big damage, and that's the end of that. So that's finally going to be the Drake going over. Willer spent so much time down here trying to assist, trying to help out even closer, leaving mid lane to come over and maybe see if they can get that early skirmish, get the Zeri online. But those backfire here. As peanut. Wants to try and escape this one. There's the flash from Closer to get him over the seismic shove as he ults in. Peanut's going to flash. Vault Breaker comes through. And Perfect Execution isn't quite going to get Closer in range. So Peanut does have to flash. And that was dangerous. Um, it's a ton of CC, a ton of burst damage as Willer. Yeah. Uh, Delight is going to find it. What the heck? Delight does so much damage. As there's Chains of Corruption as well. And First Blood goes to Baze. Delight, man. He is already... Ruthless. He is... <laughs> He's already level 6 uh, in this game, which I'm not talking about his ultimate spike, obviously, because he is Karma. Willer just steps over a little bit too far here. He's going to bait it. Yeah, knew exactly what was going to happen there. Got him, got him, got him. Yeah. <laughs> no flash. <laughs> Did you like how he said it as well? He's like, by the way, Sejuani, no flash. It's, it, like, I, I could I could see the smoke. It's hard as a collie. Okay, hold up. Yeah, Myrtle is going all out. On to Doran here. Does find the Q. And is this the classic Cassante kill? As Doran, you don't want to walk back towards him. Chovy's going to turn up. And that is not going to be the solo kill. Double flashes here on the top side. As another battle here. Bottom lane. As Delight is flashing away. Doesn't want anything to do with the ulting Zeri. And a lot of it is just plate money. Like, honestly, it's it's mainly just lane priority that's given them this kind of lead. As Seismic Shove's going to be pushing Closer all the way into Peanut. And the Shroud does go down. They get the Flash still regardless. Cool scaling, bro. It doesn't matter. I got the cool dragons. Uh, as Willa is looking for this one, does find the Glacial Prison. Peanut going to be taken down. Closer collecting that kill as now Chovy arrives a little bit late. As, all right. The Shock Blast is going to miss. Cease and Desist can be used here. There it goes, but he just goes all out and gets all underneath the turret, and he will be absolutely fine. Lift Sandbox now here in this mid lane, and immediately Willa puts down the Rift Herald. Like you say, not a lot of damage done to the turret. There's almost loose, any loose. other moment yeah. you will be stronger relatively than you are right now uh, into Genji, who are just feeling fantastic. Close are going to get caught, though, and Doran was just standing ready to hit the Akali, but they didn't even need to. Lift Sandbox have started off the Drake, but now they have to do it without their most fed member as Peanut looks for Envy, and he will get him. There's a cease and desist, and oh, hi, Chovy. Welcome to the fight. Doesn't find the seismic shove, though, as Genji now um, have Lift Sandbox in a very awkward position. Willow is trying to frontline, and Bertle wants to get in here, but Genji are moving too fast and too far forward. They're too split, and Paze is going to get yet another one. Genji are just picking them apart one by one. Yeah, Willard, but it wasn't the right choice. They end up losing closer as, ooh, that's a... Okay. That delayed. Yeah, Glacial Prison does come in, but the uh, Chains of Corruption will land, and that is the first bit of CC connecting, guys. And that meant a dead champion on the side of Live Sandbox. Now they're going to hunt down Kyle. He's going to be the first one to fall, but Delight may go down, and no, Kyle survives. Genji will be able to kill the Cassante, though, as they are fighting this battle on multiple fronts, and now Kyle needs to get real skippy to try and get out of this one. Good luck. Yeah, in goes Peanut. Oh, what the heck? He kills him via reward? That's ludicrous. Uh, sometimes it happens as uh, Closer is going to be able to backflip his way out. The uh, Piercing Arrow does a lot of work here as Envy He's gone rogue. Bounty He's going to be able to take a bounty in the mid lane, but Genji, they say, well, go for it. We'll take a Baron. All of that CC. Speaking of lockdown, well, Peanut uh, has ult. Yeah, Peanut and Koza are going to say hi to one another. Oh, good avoidance there as Perfect Execution is going to come in. Koza, I believe, there did not have his Shroud available, but does now. 
And Doran's going to come through, and that is a very dead Akali. Just no way that he can operate in a side lane at this state of the game. Not that he really needed that spike to be hit, because he's just been doing so much on his own already. It's a very low kill uh, game for Chovy, but he's doing cool. so much value. Envy moment. I don't know about that, as Chains of Corruption are going to lock down the Lulu. Pays almost one-shots him, but he might have to use his flash. He does so. Closer on the flank. Can Pays be taken down here? Cease and assist, and Pays is the one that actually gets the kill. Was it a bait the whole time? I don't think so. But still, Pays is going to live, and live sandbox are not. That's a double kill. Oh my god, does he get the triple? Yes, he does. Maybe he gets a penter after being the one to bait the play. Oh, it's so sad for Liv Sandbox, because honestly, that was a fight purely about wallet strength, Wolf. Well, I mean, that and the fact that Akali just cannot survive if she's point-click CC'd. Yeah. And she just instantly deleted. I hope we don't see any more Akali in this series, to be honest with you, Atlas. That's, uh, it's not a closer problem, it's a Unofficial problem. Penta? Unofficial Penta? Unofficial Penta? Unofficial Penta? Unofficial Penta? It's the unofficial Penta angle! Kyle, give it to him! No. No, it's only Morgan that gives Penters. <laughs> Kyle's not going to give that one away, as it is going to be, theoretically, the unofficial uh, quadra kill, therefore pays in the end. He just has nothing he could do. He got that one kill when Wheeler turned and they set up the scene. Delight did more damage than their whole team, Wolf! Yeah. It's amazing for mid-game team fights, And... I mean, this seems to be a surprise to the Korean casters, but for us, we were, we were calling out the second we saw the Elise, you know? Yeah. I, it just seems so obvious. But we're going to need to see more from Live Sandbox if it's going to be an interesting series. Jump onto the Rift here game number two and find out. Yeah, he stayed in the tri brush he's seen now. Yeah, and Pei's going to have to back off immediately. Level two comes in. There is the flash that we were talking about. The lantern going to be taken. That was so beautifully played. Saves and Pei's holds the flash. Yeah, yeah, he saves the flash with the lantern. That was really slick there from the bottom duo of Gen G. Toby going to eat a bit of extra damage on this trade, however. is his first time playing Yone this season. Regardless here now, the top side of the map is going to go back to Doran's control because he was playing very safely, not knowing where Wither was. But this could be early Drake. Oh, well, Cocoon is going to land. There's the hook as well. The Chain CC comes in, and that's First Blood going over to Pace. He now has red and white guns, but Envy, he's got a culling, but it's not actually aimed the right way. As now Pace gets into the brush. The flash has to be used as Willa. Follows the Q with the resonating strike, but he's not going to be able to kill anyone. And Gen G, they grab first blood. He's going to find out the bad oh, news. Oh no, Peanut! He's skittering in, and Envy. I think he kind of knows that he's dead. As there's the play, and Peanut collects the kill. And this is just not. This is not okay. You know, you can't. You can't actually just stay and push like that without any vision, without any information. Yeah, but at least Live Sandbox are now able to move on over. And all. Uh, maybe I'm saying it too soon, but no, Willow is able to secure the dragon. Jonas Strong is toggling vision a lot and really making sure that we stay on our toes as Bertle. Can he survive this as the unbounce are? Oh my god, okay, here we are in the bottom side of the map. That is the Thresh going down. The Scion is dead, but now Pays and Peanut are running amok down here. Will the Snare come in? I don't know whether they even need it as Infernum comes on through and uh, Pays unable to secure Envy. That's why he drinks potions, but, everyone. But I mean, he's he, he lives, but he's going to lose farm and they may just simply lose this turret. Peanut could stay here. And this is a disaster. Top side, of course, an assist going over to Doran during all of this. Chovy roams over. He picks up a kill. Bloodthirster first. For any uh, champion that can build it happily, you're just feeling real good. As oh, okay. Pace going to get interrupted. Moonlight Vigil comes down, though, as the culling is going to be eaten by Delight. So, bit of a mistake there from Pace, but he's not fully punished for it. Has to use his heal. So, it would have been very, very cute, though. I like the idea regardless. As Chovy going to try and ult his way out. The tower falls, and Peanut is here. Closer just 100% baited into that one, and uh, Chovy is going to be able to pick up yet another kill. <laughs> you could start Baron pretty soon here as Genji. They almost were able to use the Herald for Baron Pryo with the weird timing we had. Is this is where things get really dirty with Chovy coming in? Well, Doran is just going to dive on forward, finds a huge flash as the tidal wave just rolls on over him. But you know how when it's you're in the surf beach, you just dive underneath the wave. It's basically what he did. As Chovy is just going to wrap them all up. And Live Sandbox, they do manage to limp away, well, that's but they're Baron. not going to be able to defend this Baron. No, and this is like the... Chovy was probably pretty annoyed. Yeah, just going to zone them away with that one, as they do not want Willa getting in there. The Baron is going to be secured. The Lee Sin, he tried to be the hero, but it's not going to work out. Sand Soldier's in position, but the hook is going to connect onto the Scion. He has to flash his Peanut, taking matters into his own hands, gets the double kill as he wants to hop over the wall, but he's not able to do so. Close against the Emperor's Dividers. 
What the heck was that delight? Just flashes it, doesn't even need to worry as now Doran is going to be able to pick up the kill on his opposite number and Trovi just wants to stack his Q, I guess, a couple of times. There we go. Genji said we are not on the same tier, not even close. Well, uh, that is the kick away from the Lantern and Pay's just going to stand his ground for a moment, but he has nowhere to go, so he's going to be picked off. And I think game's still over, but uh, it's going to play out for a little while longer. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. Am I allowed to buy my favorite item? <laughs> <laughs> he just thinks he looks cool in it. And, uh, it's like not even great. It. It's not even great for this comp, but he's just going to buy it. You know, yeah. why not? He's having a good time. Um, they are going to be able to take down this inhibitor turret towards the bottom side. As uh, Lift Sandbox still hanging on by a thread. As Tidal Wave comes in, Peanut going to have his Lantern tonight. Goes Golden. And now Gen.G trying to set up for this one. Trophy doesn't find too many in his ultimate, though. No options here. No choices. Well, Doran's going to teleport back. As, oh, my goodness. OK, that gets the Emperor's Divide. His Unbound Soul is just going to recall Trophy there. As in goes Doran, finds himself a couple of Counter-Strikes, goes Golden once again because he picked up Azonias. And he's just diving all over everyone. Look at this. Doesn't care about turrets whatsoever. The box goes down, and now Pays is trying to get some work done. but. Joby loved that one. Any way to be a tank is a good one. As Delight's going to have to flash away his Tidal Wave. Not going to find too much value as Peanut just wanders on in there, goes up into the sky and then dives on top of Envy. In goes Trovi with the ulti as well, as Kyle's going to be knocked up the bubble. It's fantastic still. The flash and then the Unbound Soul gets him back to safety and Live Sandbox. It was a valiant effort, but I don't think it's going to work out as over the wall goes Pays. And yeah, there's a Sun Disc, but they don't really care about that one. And that should be the ace, and that should be the game finally here for Gen.G. It was already basically wrapped up, but finally they give it to the delivery guy. And that is going to be the 2-0. Gen.G really making a statement in this one, and it really makes this top side of the bracket super interesting. It really Moving does. Moving forward, Gen.G versus DK. That's going to be Genji's last matchup. That's a real exciting one now. That to play their game whatsoever. But at least this time, Live Sandbox did some damage. As you can see, and be able Peanut. to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But yeah, Peanut's uh, doing as much as Doran in this game. And the Elise certainly outstripping Willow when it comes to damage done. But Thank you very much, guys. This is Jisun for the PFJ interview translation. We are here joined by Peanut Pace on the side of Gen G. Gen G picked up a clean 2 0 win up against Leaf Sandbox. And you guys are now back on the second place. How do you feel, Pace? I'm happy that we were able to make it back to the second place, and I'm so glad. Yeah, that we were able to Just put up a great performance today and get a clean 2-0. I'm also happy that we are back on the second place, and also I think the performance actually turned out to be better than we expected, so I'm happy with that. Pays in game one, um, Genji bottom duo played Varus Karma into Zeri Lulu, a very strong lane pick. So was that the concept of that game, going hard in lane early on on the bottom lane? What did you keep in mind? mind as you mm. hop onto the rift for game number one. I think everything uh, went as we expected, you know, based on the matchup. And also, I mean, Peanut told us, like, you know, try to stay in lane. And then we were able to actually counter uh, the gank attempt of the enemy jungler. So I think that was also so one point. And Pays, you've been, you know, putting up a great performance so far this season. It's only been two months since you have made a debut in the LCK. And you are stepping up so fast. Are you fully adapted to the LCK now? Yeah, because my teammates helped me up so much. Peanut, how do you feel about that? So, Pays, I think he's like living his second life because he adapted so fast. He learned so fast, so I'm surprised. Indeed, I think Pays himself was, you know, already was full of mechanics, but Delight must have been helping you out a lot, right? Yeah, together with him, I'm having a lot of fun. And then in game number two, we had Elise, Lee Sin matchup. 
and you want the POD on the list. Lee Sin Ellis was, is a very historic matchup in the LCK. Lee Sin does have a bit of an edge when it comes to the head to head record. Do they play a different role? So Liz, obviously, she has a very high pressure early on, so she does have to execute early plays in order to get ahead of Lee Sin. But if she actually fails that, Lee Sin can kind of win the game because he has better perform per potential in the late game. So we have to set up for early fights, early ganks in order to get ahead of Lee Sin. Delight, you know, Pace just said he's giving me a lot of help, but Delight actually did an interview saying Peanut is giving me a lot of input about the game knowledge. Tell us about it. I don't know. We were just like, let's cheer up, you know, let's work hard. I think it's more about our coaching staff and then my teammates giving you all the feedback. Does he also listen to all those advice and feedbacks? Yeah, for sure. Recently, he like soaks it up and he always like learn it super fast. Pays. What do you think about that? I think so too. Okay, all right then. We have another question for you, Pays. I have, you know, these days we are seeing so many weird picks going to the bottom lane. Veigar, Chogath. Any idea about that? I also tried them out. And I think they're pretty good right now. Is it viable in LCK as well? For sure. Is Genji gonna try them? I'm not sure. Now, Genji is still fighting for the bye at playoffs round two, and Genji's upcoming opponents are. Kwangdong Freaks, Hana, Life, and Diplus Kia. We have three remaining matches in the regular split, and we want to keep the second place spot, and we do have to take them down for sure. But what actually matters is your performance at playoffs. So I, I hope this can be a really good stepping stone for our development throughout the playoffs. What about you, Pays? We're going to win all three matches in order to end the regular split on second place. And this will be the end of the interview from Peanut Pace and back to the space. Thank you.